Alvin has some capabilities that it didn't have before. The new design was based on the premise that ultimately we would like the vehicle to go to 6,500 meters, which would allow us to reach about 98% of the seafloor rather than the 62 or 63%. The sub has a bunch of sensors that makes it aware of where it is in space. And we've added an additional thruster. It makes a big difference to the kind of area you can cover. Actually, a lot of the technological advances we've made have been supported by space programs. We're interested in the origins and evolution of life on our planet and thinking about life beyond Earth, you know, not just on our own planet, but what could have life looked like in the beginning of Mars history or beneath a European ocean or something like that. The hydrothermal vent communities are otherworldly. Alva does a lot of work in the Pacific Northwest because of the number of hydrothermal vents that are there. So you have these tall structures, again, taller than like the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. And I've had the privilege of diving on those, and it's amazing to basically fly the sub uh, up the face of one of these structures and see all the different communities, microbes and animals alike, that live off of them. It's kind of tough living at the seafloor, except where you have these areas where there's this new production of carbon. The magma in the crust is heating water. That water's reacting with the rocks and becoming kind of nutrient-rich, and animal communities and organisms are using the energy in that water. Instead of getting energy from the sun, you get microbes that are harnessing the energy from underwater volcanoes and building an ecosystem kind of from the bottom up as opposed to the top down. We've seen footage of when Mount St. Helens erupted, for example, that huge plume of ash that spread around our planet. You know, So you can think about these big plumes coming out of these hydrothermal vents. And there have been a couple studies that have traced this hydrothermal plume thousands of miles. Alvin gives us the opportunity to go down and really look at what's out on the seafloor. So without Alvin, you know, who knows how long it would have taken us to discover hydrothermal systems, but uh, it's a relatively young field. Mainly what the scientists really want to do are collect samples, and they want a sample from that spot. The vehicle is really a sampling machine, so it might be measuring the chemicals, the particles that are in the water, shooting light out and measuring the backscatter, how much comes back. Alvin was set up so that a scientist can dream up whatever they want to put on the vehicle. I would describe what we're doing as basic research. It's learning things about our planet and our environment that we didn't know before. At that interface between the Earth's interior and the hydrosphere, that chemical exchange has an impact on global climate systems. Some of those correlate very well with when we've had periods of mass extinction. Research in the oceans is directly relevant to people's lives. The R&D that we do is hugely important to prepare ourselves for the future.